Let's get started. So, um, hello everyone. Thanks for coming to my talk. I know it's quite late and you guys must be really tired. So, um, I do apologize. My original slide is testing the merge and as I made through the slides, I realized, man, it's kind of like too deep in the weeds. Like, I don't want to put people to sleep. <laughs> so, um, I, yeah, so I ended up changing the entire thing and now the new slides is um, embrace the layers, merge edition, so yeah. So hi, I'm Terence. I work at Prismatic Labs. My main work is on Prism. It's one of the five consensus layer client. It's written in Go, and um, I've been working on proof of stake since early 2019 for Ethereum, and that's known as the Beacon Chain. Uh, nowadays, I'm mostly working on the merge. I'm looking at post-merge MEV extraction and data sharding. So yeah, it's nice to be here. So, so this is roughly what we know at merge, right? You have this your consensus layer, you ha then you have your execution layer, right? You have two different layer. So what is consensus layer? Consensus layer ensures that everyone on the consensus side comes to an agreement. It tracks the head of the chain through some four choice rule and um, that's where the validators hands out. Then what is execution there? Ex execution is where the EVM is, that's where you process user level transactions, that's where the state tree is, right? So the separation of concern is very nice here because like they're both very like complicated piece of software and on the consensus layer side, I don't really care so much uh, on, the versus on the execution layer side as long as like the, the only thing I care about is what this engine API provide, right? So you have this nice engine API basically encapsulate away the complexity of these two layers. Now, what if you want to stake, you want to run a validator, you want to earn some free ETH, then more likely or not, you will also run a validator client. So what is a validator client? It's a lightweight pieces of software that manages your signing key, it has a slashing protection DB. It makes sure that you doesn't, you don't get slash. We don't double sign. And then it has like an RPC client to get block, get attestations, get duties through the Beacon client, right? So here we're adding one more layer. That is the validator client layer. Yeah? What if you are staking exchange? You are staking pool. You are managing thousands of signing keys. That's a lot of money. You obviously don't want to do this on your laptop, right? You likely will have those keys on like a remote vote. Then in, in this instance, you'll likely have a signer somewhere else that is extremely secure. Right? For example, a remote key manager, it's an open standard for that. And there's a remote signer API, right? So you can see on the consensus layer side, we are already like separate out to different layers. So what's the trade-off here? The trade-off here is that we're increasing the complexity, but at the same time we're gaining security, right? So let's tie everything back to the original picture. You have your consensus layer client, you have your beacon node, you have validator client, you have your remote signer, those are optional, and then you have your execution client, right? And then both have P2P open for gossiping blocks, gossiping attestations, gossiping user transactions. Then you have your user REST API on the bottom where users can query data. So is this it? Are we done? Like, can we go home? Is this like the merge, right? And uh, probably not. So let me give you a few more examples on like why we have to do a little bit more. So this is the MEV supply chain today. You have your searcher, which looks at private and public mempool. They look at transactions to extract value from. They send it to the builder. Builder send it to the miner. Miner competes on producing the block. And then whoever miner solves the puzzle, miner gets to extend the block chain by one. That's nice. Let's replace proof of work with proof of stake. Now, instead of miner competing, you just have one validator, right? So this validator is pre-assigned. You know when you're gonna propose a block six minutes beforehand, so there's no more competition, right? This also opens up a very interesting question because, like, this enables before where you just have a few mining pools that are able to extract MEV. This enables this open competition, right? So not 
at home validator, you can extract MEV if you want, right? So we're going from just like a few miners to like potentially thousands or ten thousands of validators that's able to extract MEV. So how do we ensure that the searcher and the builder and the validator, they trust each other, right? How do we ensure trust? So there, here's a new actor. We introduce relayer. Okay, this is relayer is essentially what governs trust before full PBS. So what does the relayer do? Relayer essentially makes sure the searchers and builder and the validator they don't screw each other over. They essentially make sure that the block the builder built is valid. The the block the builder built pays the correct amount to the validator. It, it's a data availability service, right? And um, ideally, you want more than one relay there because the like, redundancy is important. You also don't want to deal with censorship. So you want some censorship resistance here. So let's attach those two new actors back to our original diagram. You have your consensus client. You want to produce a block. It can go through MacBoost, which is this gateway. It's a proxy to then you call the relayer through the relayer API. Then you call the builder through the relayer API to get a block, and then pass it back to the validator, and validator sign it and broadcast it. So here you have a nice speaking block with MEV extracted. It's important to mention that like. It's also, we want some sort of fallback, right? So in the event where the relayer is down, the builder is down, you still want to have some sort of backup. So you can actually go through the engine API, which is recommended, to produce your own local block. Or even at the end, right, you can compare values like to see which block gets higher amount and stuff like that. So having redundancy is very important, right? But as you can see from this diagram, right, we're, we are also adding one more layer, and that's a block proposal, block builder layer. Um, so Relayer is this auditable piece of software. That means that Relayer performance matters. V relayers cannot be shady because it needs to be trusted, right? So wouldn't it be nice to have a committee of monitors that monitor the relay performance, right? So here we're adding one more layer. We're saying, hey, let's monitor the relayer to make sure that relayers are not playing nice with the builder and the validator, right? And I can just keep going on with this, right? I, so I hope you guys get the message what I'm doing here. I'm just keep adding more actors to this picture to gain security, to gain more futures with a trade-off of complexity, right? So in this picture, like, what, like, why don't we add a multiplexer between the consensus client and the execution client? So in the event one of the consensus client fails, we can fall back to a different implementation. Or what if we use something like DVT, SSV, like some validator share technology to split 32 ETH, so therefore that, like, if, like, one of my friends, their sending keys doesn't work or is offline, like, our single validator could still perform well. So it's like the meme, right? So which one is it? Do you just prefer the one on the top or do you just prefer the one on the bottom, right? The one on the top is more elegant. It's easier to implement. It's simple to reason. The one on the bottom is definitely more future rich, right? But there's a lot more risk that goes into it because there's so many APIs. There's so many timing constraints. But it enables a lot more like future completeness, right? It's like the meme, right? Mom say, hey, can we have the merge? And mom say, no, we have the merge at home, but merge at home turns out to be this beast, right, that right now we're dealing with. So are we done here? Like, is this the end, right? Is this, is this the end for all, right? I mean, probably not, because like, we're heading towards a modular future, right? We we're separating consensus with execution. Now we're separating um, execution with the block proposal, and with this um, Rob central roadmap, we're separating data availability with execution. Then we're with the EIP 4444, we're separating the long term data storage with everything else, right? So we're heading towards this more modular future. And this ties into the title of my slides, right? It's like we, like we should embrace layering, right? We should embrace that old good things coming layer, whether it's your favorite bakery, your favorite cake, like your favorite lasagna, like. Layer often goes like beyond your imagination, just at the bottom. There's a social layer, that's me and you. We form some sort of governance. 
And then there's also like infra and hardware that's likely where people run nodes on, right? And then that's the, within the hardware, there's also CPU, OS, kernel, and then there's also like your signing layer, your cryptography layer, then, then your consensus, execution, and then layer two, which we know a lot about. So it's important that we encapsulate complexity because everything we have done so far is, is extremely complicated, right? But it doesn't matter because like components and components, they don't need to know about each other. We just need to like have strong API that allow them to communicate nicely, right? So we want clean separation of concerns. We don't want leakage, right? So as a human, I think that we're like exceptional at dealing with complexity, just we are always able to find new abstraction to solve problems in a creative way. But how many APIs is enough, right? Like to get that previous diagram to work, like there are so many APIs from beacon to execution to ETH1 to builder to relay, right? Does it matter we have so many API right now? Right? So between the API, right, I think it's important to have very strong API. Like between two components, you want this integration to look like that, right? You want API that's followed to standard, it's readable, it's testable, it has the highest security, right? This is, we, we, we want to build like integration like this. We don't want to build integration like that, right? That just means leakage. That just means bad integration. That just, that, that, that just means there may be a catastrophic like bug that's happening in the future. What about UX, right? As a developer, that's something that I deeply care about. Like today to um, participate on the vision chain, you have to run two clients to software, and then to run a validator, you have to run three. To extract MEV, you potentially have to run four, right? It's like, are we doing the best we can at solving this problem, right? At, it's at home stage here, um, the enthusiasts, my mom, my dad, are they going to be able to run those? That's something that we really should improve on and then we should be really tough on. So this is the landscape today. As you can see, many awesome team, companies, individuals are solving this problem. I am just one of the many, and um, so shout out to every person that's been working on this. And um, please, yeah, please, if there's anything that interests you, like, talk to the team there. So while I didn't cover in depth, like, there are so many things that I haven't covered. For example, like, exception, sorry, execution, like client, layer two, bridges, those are, those are very complicated modules on their own. They each have their own complexity, but it's also encapsulated nicely. So, but they all have their own layers. So this is all I have for today. If you guys are interested in any of the work that we're doing, such as the merge, such as MEV extraction, Feel free to DM me. I'll be here after. So yeah, it's my first ECC. So thank you so much for having me. So questions? Yeah. Questions? So we can take questions if anyone has questions. Hello. On the slide, I think it was on take four. You were showing that. Uh, there are basically two ways to reach block builders through MEV boost and relayers. Mm -hmm. uh, but what is the point of having MEV boost and relayers if searchers with bundles can still make their business directly with builders? Because my understanding of that left uh, system is to allow everyone to benefit of the MEV. Yeah. But if searchers can still bypass the system, then what's the whole point? Well, that's probably a bad diagram. I'm just assuming that like they both are listening to different mempool. They're, they're like constructing block differently. So on the top, you likely have a more profitable block, right? But on the bottom, you probably have a less profitable block, right? And then it just, it, the slide illustrates some fallback mechanism. Just in the event when the top block fails, you can always use the bottom block. Okay, thank you so much, guys.